Hey, what's up, my lovely subscribers, or should I say, viewers? Because 98% of you who are watching my videos aren't subscribed. What? Today I'm gonna do a very highly requested video which is to show my entire drawing process. Now keep in mind that my drawing process is not always the same. I do different stuff depending upon the artwork that I'm doing but I made this drawing specifically for this video so that I could use most of the tools and techniques in it and show you how they are implemented in my drawing. By the end your drawings are gonna go from this to this. Just kidding, but you should be able to draw this. Also keep in mind that this is a digital art tutorial and, I, uh, and I'm gonna use my tablets and stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about or how to use that stuff uh, or how to start with digital drawing or what equipment or software that you should be uh, using or getting, uh, I, rec I recommend you watch this video of mine before starting with this one. Um, also another side note, this tutorial can be followed by anyone from beginner to pros so you should be able to do all the stuff that I mentioned in any software of your choice. So without wasting any time, let's roll the intro. Okay, so let's start from scratch. Before I begin, I always look for a reference for what I'm gonna draw. I chose this as my reference image. Oh sorry, wrong image. I chose this as my reference image and then I decided that it would be great to make this a night scene with all the orbs and stuff that he has in the form and make him pop a bit more. Uh, after I decided that what I'm gonna go for, uh, I start by making a sketch in Procreate on my iPad. Now don't worry, you don't need an iPad or Procreate for this. You can use any software or tablet or whatever for your liking. Um, I just prefer it because um, it's like I, I use it because I have it kind of thing. But anyways, I start with either a light blue or a light red pencil or simple brush. You don't need anything fancy for this part. Just put down all the proportion and basic figure that you see. You don't need to worry about details yet. I usually start with a circle for a head and then I draw the chin and then the body. Um, after you have the basic figure and anatomy right, you can start to put down the little, uh, the little details. Uh, I try to be very fast during this stage, I don't worry uh, too much if it looks a little off because you can always fix that by selecting the area with the lasso tool and using the mesh transformation to fix that part. Um, you can be very sketchy during this part and figure out all the base stuff. So after you are done with this you can go to the line art part straight away but I chose to do another sketch uh, on top to clean it up a little more. I decreased the layers opacity and made a new sketch on the layer above to solidify uh, his structure. After you're done, you can do the final line art with black. Um, on iPad, I chose to use Clip Studio for this part because I really like the real G pen. Um, there's not much for me to tell you guys because it's mostly just tracing what uh, I did earlier. Just turn the opacity of your base sketch down to where you can just barely see it and follow the lines. Uh, if you need more detailed tips on line art, you can watch this video over here. So yeah. Okay, so after I'm done drawing, I take this line art into Photoshop to color it. Now you might be thinking, why the hell is this dude using three freaking software for just one simple drawing? Well, I was thinking of how I can implement my iPad into my workflow, so I was seeing which software, um, I was like testing which software works best for me, but as you can see, I didn't do anything special, so you can do all this in any software of your liking. Now before we begin, there is an important step which you need to do that is gonna play a role later on, which is to select the selection tool. The shortcut for that is W on Photoshop and Clip Studio. Now with selection tool, just select all the area outside your sketch. After that, right click and choose select inverse. This will select your entire sketch and now you can fill it with a color. It doesn't matter which color, so I just chose purple. Um, this is called masking and once your mask is ready, we can go to coloring. All right, so here is uh, here is the Photoshop file that I used for this drawing, and um, as you might see, that the mask layer is below the line art layer, and the reason behind that is you want the mask to be behind the line art and not above it. So yeah, that's why that's why I usually put it behind the line art. Now. This the line art that I'm showing you is not the actual line art that I used during uh, in this drawing. I changed it a bit, and in some later process, I erased parts of it, which was on purpose. I, I didn't accidentally erase it, and I just simply used the eraser tool and like you know, oh, not the mask. Let's go to the line art and erase some parts of it. I will tell you the reason why uh, I erased it. 
but all you need to know for now is um, that this is the original line art and this is just a copy which is a bit different as you can see there are some parts that are different right so yeah I, I will I will show you the tutorial on this line art but keep in mind that the colors are gonna be a bit uh, weirdly placed because they are gonna be placed uh, on this uh, according to this line art not this one okay so let's start with the coloring um, as you can as you might know the coloring has like two or three steps the first step is to do the flats what we call like flats flats means like putting on every like the base color so that you get the idea of um, what's gonna happen uh, like what the color is gonna look like and then on the base layer you make clipping masks of shadows and highlights and after you're done you can do more stuff that I did and I will explain it later but for now let's uh, let's learn about the flats and the clipping mask and the shadows and stuff so let's start off with the skin so this is the skin flat that I did and as you can see again it's below the line art layer and all the coloring uh, all the coloring is done below the line art it's never it's never supposed to be over or on the line art layer because you want the colors to go below the stuff as you can see it's coming out but that's because this is not the line art that's supposed to be like was supposed to be for this one it's still coming out <laughs> but it's much better so actually you know what let me use this line art and I will tell you how to do it right so for skin it's pretty simple just hit W on your keyboard it's the same for clip studio paint it's called the magic wand tool and you select the area you want to color so let's say his face his ears his hands and then you choose the color let's say this looks pretty good you hit G which is for the fill tool you make a layer oops you make a layer above the mask and you fill it with the color pretty simple right and that's all but keep in mind that you you don't want the lay you don't want the colors to literally be on the border you can see there's a bit of blue grayish part over here you don't want it to look like that right and there's like see there's some parts that are not colored properly so what we're gonna do to fix that we're gonna go like let's control Z and remove that we're gonna go to select modify expand and expand by one or two pixels if your lines are very thick you can go for two pixels but if your lines are like mine one pixel is a safe bet and it's like now you can see the lines are like in the middle of the line art all these jagged lines so now the colors will be like there's no there's not gonna be any gap in the colors there might be still a little bit like here as you can see but overall it's gonna be fine oops did I just yeah it's gonna be fine so now I showed you how to do the flats let f let's flat all the layers all the parts of his body so I already have flatted everything as you can see let's um, delete this control D to deselect and here's the skin layer that I did as you can see everything is on like there's no gaps and everything and you want to make sure there are no gaps right so after that let's do forget about these things that here let's do the yellows and here's the yellow part right and after that we do the orbs here as you might see that every um, every uh, color is on a different layer and you want to keep it like that because um, later on you're going to shade everything and it's going to be way easier if all the colors are on a different layer then we do eye whites the white part of the eyes and it's not exactly white it's more like yellow gray let, let me show you what color it is uh, you go to brush tool press alt to get the eyedropper and you can see it's this color here um th this is not exactly um, white this is more like gr grayish yellow and you don't want to uh, make the eye whites to be exactly white in color all right so after that we have um, the iris which is this one here 
Now with the eyes, uh, I think oh, we have the black part left and that's it. That's all we had. As you can see, none of the colors are spilling out. There's a little bit here, but that's because I erased the line art and that's why it looks a bit weird. And um, I will explain later on, don't worry why I erased the line art. And I'm stupid, I should have uh, made a duplicate of the line art layer, but whatever. What's done is done. So after this, we're gonna do the shading. So shading um, is done using clipping mask, What's what, what we call clipping mask. So making a clipping mask is very simple. Go to whatever layer you wanna shade, let's say skin, you wanna shade the skin. Make a layer on top of it and oh, let me unmask this. So make a layer, let me delete this first. You go to skin, make a, make a layer on top and press alt on your computer and when you go in between those layers like the skin layer and the layer that you just made you will see something like this so it will show you the downward thingy and you will able to you will be able to clip it to the skin layer now what it does is it helps you i mean not just help it will um it will only color the part of the skin that you um, uh, like only the color of it, it will only color on top of the colors of the skin for let's say so let's say you want to darken the skin layer a bit let's go to brush tool make it a bit larger and let's say you want to uh, shade it and you don't want it to get out of the lines if you use a clipping mask it will never get out as you can see you cannot color any other part of his body only the skin and that is really helpful when it comes to shading right so let's remove this and let me delete this and that's how I shaded um, this drawing. I used this color as you can see it's kind of an orange uh, pinkish not orange it's a pinkish color and um, I used a simple let me show you oops the simple where's the skin hard drawn pressure size with the hardness and the flow um, turned down and let's use the clipping mask again so i clipped it again and now none of the lines are gonna go outside the skin all right so you're gonna use this and that's how you will shade all the areas of the skin so now i know the lighting's coming from the left and from the top so the uh, shadows are gonna be from the bottom and yeah that's how it's gonna look like so now we will have now because he's yellow in color he also needs uh, a bit of yellow to his shadows uh, or even purple but um like uh, that's how he's drawn he needs yellows in his shadows so i put a little bit of as you can see a little bit of orange yellow hue to his shadows on top of the on top of the uh, red shadow layer right so now we have done the skins uh, skin tones so we're gonna move on to the yellow parts now for some reason all his shadows are like pinkish orange in color so it's gonna look like this after you have shaded everything um, I simply sometimes I use the as you can see here I used uh, the soft round um, pressure opacity and flow brush or just soft round pressure opacity just the normal airbrush as you can see and that's how I color it and sometimes I use the lasso tool to make a selection, let's say here, and then use the brush and color it. And when you do it, it's going to look something like this. That's what I used over here to color. So this is the orange part. Then I even put some white highlights, as you can see here. This will this will help him pop out a bit because this uh, this is like a flame that uh, that, that uh, is surrounding him so uh, it's supposed to be a bit white in color. Now we have the orange, the whites, and then I put a little bit of white on top of the orange part. So let me explain it again. So we have the base sketch, the flat. Then we have a bit of white on top. 
and then we have using the soft round airbrush and then we have this layer with uh, a lot of the uh, pinkish orange that you see on his face and everything and then we have a bit more of the white you know and that's how it's gonna look after you have done all this then we move on to orbs these are pretty simple uh, you just need to add a bit of darks uh, I mean black to this side because the light is gonna be coming from the left right left and the top but I'm gonna I'm gonna do something at the end I'm gonna make uh, I'm gonna make the highlights come out here so I need to make it dark into the uh, on the other side so after that we put a bit more towards the left using the airbrush a bit more of yellow tint as you can see and like on on these orbs it's gonna be uh, on the left because that's there the lights are facing Naruto right so uh, the light uh, as you can see it's gonna be facing him now you might be wondering like why I did the shadows and the lights on the same side well it's because the global lighting is on the left but the light that is coming from Naruto is from the uh, from, is on the right so that's why there's gonna be a yellow shadow uh, I mean yellow highlight on this side and this side this side facing Naruto obviously so after that um, what is this for I don't remember does this even do anything oh yeah a bit of uh, yellow highlight on the top as I said before there's a bit of yellow light coming from uh, blue light coming from the top so I think it's yeah it's blue it's very uh, mild shading so it doesn't even matter that much so for the eyes we do the exact same color the pink orange thing and it's supposed to go here using the same brush for the iris or his eyes whatever you have to put a bit of yellow and that's it and that's how you do the flats and the shading and if you want to uh, if you want to end it here that's fine as well you can just uh, make a background um, I chose this color to be the background because I'm gonna make a entire like a moon or something uh, I plan to make a moon or something in the back and yeah so that's that um, so now as you can see he's like way too like emitting he's emitting a lot of light and stuff and I didn't want it to look like that I wanted to make him a bit more like undertoned and uh, a bit more popping because there's I, I wanted to give him some lights from the left a highlight from the left so that it looks like there's something coming from the left side and he's uh, he's supposed to be a bit darker and he's supposed to be standing in front of a moon or something so what I did was I made a layer up on top of all the um, coloring layer uh, you see this is the blacks um, this is the layer that I'm talking about but I made a layer on top of all the layers I selected the mask now this is the reason we made the mask right you hit W and you remove sample all layers and you will select the entire sketch oops right and then you wanna go to like a really dark blue like this one here if you wanna do what I'm doing and then you want to hit G for fill and fill it with blue. Now you might be like, well, why, why would you do that? Why did you just turn everything to the... Oh, I forgot about this patch. I'm going to remove that later on. But that's what I did. And then to make it darker, you go to multiply. Now, this is way too dark for anything. So you don't want to ever leave it at that. So turn the opacity down to about like... 65 60 percent and as you can see now this is much better see um this is supposed to be a night scene so he's not supposed to pop out this much there, there's supposed to be a bit more highlight stuff right so now let's delete this and i'll show you what i actually used but this was the layer that i uh, did don't worry about this clipping mask i have removed it later on but yeah so this is what he's gonna look like after all that so after I have done that uh, there are two things that I did I put a lot of effects 
on his body uh, the highlights and stuff from the left side and i put a lot of uh, stuff in the background so uh, let's show let me show you the background first i did it at the end but i will show it uh, first because um yeah, because i want to so this is what the background is gonna look like at the end and what i did here was let me turn these off and so i have this ellipse i used the ellipse tool um right here to make a circle and then i converted to ra i rasterized the layer and then i added outer glow you can just double click the layer and you can go inner glow and outer glow i did those on this and i uh, filled it with white now after i did the dark blue and the light blue i added some uh, color uh, on top you you see uh, these are all clip uh, clip masks to the ellipse so that it's easier like it doesn't go outside the area and right? i you know so that's what i did and i chose multiply for this layer just to make it a bit darker and for the next part you might be wondering what what is that now for that what i did i i found out a few like paint uh, abstract like paint marks or paint scratches and i went to image adjustment and i went to um black and white okay so now we have the black and white uh, image so we're gonna take it take this image we're gonna take it here and I, I'm gonna drop it and as you can see it's gonna be placed over here you just move it to where it looks good it, it gives it a moon like texture so that's why I use this one and you want to choose the layer blending mode from normal to um, soft light and you're gonna get the texture you see that here now that's what I did for oh my God. Okay. Doing this. that's what I did for these two layers as you can see these are both just textures that I found out that I found on the internet and I used that for the shading and then I, I put a bit more darks on the bottom part and that's how I made the moon for the clouds I just basically used the soft brush and I painted the area however I liked and then I put a bit more uh, like a light blue shade and I uh, using the soft brush with a uh, pressure opacity and oh no the uh, uh, the pen uh, pressure I added the highlights on the clouds so that's what it looks like at the end and then I uh, did the adjustment I did some adjustment like let's say uh, you can go to adjustments and brightness and exposure vibrance and all that stuff just to make it uh, pop out a bit and that's what it looks like I made it a bit dark because the background is supposed to be a lot darker you know? so yeah so that's how the background looks before after right so after that after we have done the background we will do some layer effects now uh, let's leave this for later on but as you can see this is what I did so you might be wondering how I made it look so like vibrant and stuff so if you just choose a bright not too bright but like somewhere around here choose a yellow color use the brush and as you can see whenever I paint there's like this glow on it that's because the layer is set to the layer blending mode is set to, is set to linear dodge or add now linear dodge is a very useful tool if you want to learn coloring because it allows you to put highlights um, in any anywhere you want and you don't have to exactly paint that area so that's what I, it's sometimes called add in uh, uh, in procreate and I think it's called linear dodge the exact same name in clip studio so you choose that and you set the so double click on the layer and put it to outer glow with this color as the and you can copy these settings I adjusted it according to the drawing I adjust it every time according to the drawing all right so that's the settings and what I did was I went to the 
I went to these areas and I started like coloring this you know what I mean I didn't use this brush exactly I used hard drawn pressure size just turn the size down a bit and as you can see that's what I kind of did no no that's not what I did the color is a bit different oh yeah there you go and soft round pressure there you go so this is the brush now I'm right now I'm using a mouse so that's why it looks a bit weird but if you're using a, a pen tablet or something it's gonna look better right so as you can see this is how it's gonna turn out now after your uh, like when you are coloring this you might be noticing that the color on the black part is like orange and on the light part is like yellow so I wanted to avoid that so what I did was I used an eraser uh, turned the size down and I went to the line art and I erased the parts of the line art that were overlapping with these highlights so that's why I told you I've raised the line art you see uh, the line art only goes up until here and like up until here because I wanted to remove uh, all the parts that were covering the highlights you know what I mean so that's why I removed the removed the line art a bit and it, it really helps to you should like whenever you're doing something like that this is a lesson for you guys make a duplicate and you can just like uh, turn the uh, visibility off and you can do anything you want on the original layer but if you mess up something you can you always have the copy the duplicate of the layer I forgot to make a duplicate here that's why I have to make a tutorial on this now without the original line art so yeah so that's pretty much it how I um, did the highlights I, as you can see I put some on his uh, eyes I put some on these parts on his nose I put some on the, chin, on the chin but I removed it later on because I didn't like it that much and yeah as you can see all the lights are coming from the left side that's what I wanted and then I added this glow which is like you can see this is uh, still on linear dodge add I chose a, a soft brown pressure not the pressure but the opacity brush pull the size out and I like I colored it like this as you can see and I didn't do that much because I wanted to make it still look organic so I only did a bit on the on the as you can see hands uh, on the shoulder on his face uh, I mean on the on the headband and on his hair a bit so that's what I did and I put highlights on the balls as well on the orbs I mean <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much it and then you add I, I added a bit of uh, darks to the left uh, right side and then a bit of blue because um, you know yellow and blue are like on the opposite spectrum so they contrast very well together so and after that I, I added some lightning because it looked cool uh, it's uh, it's the exact same linear dodge mode and I added some outer glow just to make it a make it pop a bit if you don't do outer glow it's gonna look like this which is not exactly what lightning looks like and if you do after outer glow yeah this looks what lightning should look like and I also added uh, like a bit of uh, red to his um, the shadows because you know I wanted the shadows to pop out a bit more I later decided not to use this but it still looks cool uh, it's on linear dodge like what you expect oh wait this is not on linear dodge this is just normal color yeah so this is what it looks like now this is pretty much the entire process this is what I do and in order to make it finalized I, I do a trick um, that I learned from a guy called White Manga. He's on YouTube and he's like, he's a big inspiration for me. And he's been like an awesome guy. And you can check out his channel. I'm gonna link it on top right here. As you can see, just click this link and you will uh, go to his channel. 
Um, this is a technique I, I believe he uh, I, I learned it from him and it's really useful if you're drawing anime or manga related stuff because um, this technique is used by like major studios when they're making an anime so what this technique is like you just uh, choose select all the layers that you have and you can do that by holding shift and select the bottom layer select the top layer and then press this uh, group button create a new group and it's gonna group everything in one layer I already did that as you can see and everything is just on this layer you see so after the everything is grouped um, what you do is make a duplicate of that group so make a duplicate select OK and then you flatten that uh, merge that group and you will have a copy you see like there's this one and there's this one and this is like you cannot edit anything because you merged all the layers right so you what you want to do with this layer is you want to go to filter blur and select Gaussian blur uh, I don't know how you say it just Gaussian I guess Gaussian blur and choose it between 20 to 25 some people use more but I prefer 20 to 25 and then hit OK and it's gonna blur oh wait oh yeah it's gonna blur everything that you did now you might be like whoa what, what's this now <laughs> go to normal uh, the layer blending mode and choose lighten where is lighten here and this is gonna look very weird unless you turn down the opacity and now you see like what I mean it's gonna give it the misty really misty anime kind of look as you can see the line arts are like it's it's more like like they turn the opacity uh, more when they are doing some memory stuff in the anime for like let's example some characters uh, for example some characters remembering something um, then uh, they're gonna turn the opacity up so that it looks a bit more misty kind of and it softens everything and it makes it look like way more appealing I, I mean I believe it so a lot of people don't do this so this is what I did and let me delete this layer yeah as you can see this is without it this is with it without with and I, I prefer the way it looks now after that it's basically um, uh, mostly you just have to do the color correction now how you do color correction is um, you have the adjustment layer now if you don't have this adjustment panel you just go to window and just choose adjustments and you will have this then go to brightness and contrast and adjust everything however you like okay and it should be fine now I will delete this because I already made the adjustments this is the brightness and contrast that I did uh, I made some on the vibrance and saturation and stuff like that so yeah you that, that's like you just play with the stuff until you like how it looks right so this is what mine looks like at the end after I'm I'm done with everything and okay so I uh, I think I believe I forgot about these parts at the end so what I did was I made another layer on top and I used the soft round brush and I went in using uh, the layers on the linear dodge again and I went in and I painted all the yellow parts with the brush so that it pops out a bit more because um, on the reference that's what it looked like and I totally forgot about it until the end so that and then I add my signature at the end obviously so this was the entire process on how to create uh, this specific drawing if you guys want to know more which uh, this is the entire process of creating this um, specific drawing so yeah that's how you make Naruto uh, I mean QB Naruto or however you want to say it but yeah that's uh, that's my process on making this specific version and uh, if you want I can put this in the description I believe um, but you can easily find it on Google I, I won't put it in the description because uh, you just put paint um, like splashes or whatever on Google and you'll find something like that you don't exactly have to uh, have it in blue color you, it can be any color you uh, uh, that you find it in and it's it's really easy to find on Google all right so I see half a person made it here 
so if you did leave a like hit subscribe follow me on instagram all the good stuff and if you want to see more tutorial they're going to be coming out in um uh further down the line but yeah i'm gonna plan i'm gonna make more uh tutorials so yeah hopefully you guys learned a lot from these videos because it takes forever to make these kind of videos so that's it for today see you in the next one peace